Today we're going to talk about saddle point asymptotics, uh, which is uh, where we turn to estimate coefficients for generating functions that have no singularity. Uh, this is uh, the final step in uh, complex asymptotics. Uh, it's uh, the last way to get a quick asymptotic uh, estimate of uh, generating function coefficients uh, according to our standard overview. Uh, to understand saddle point, we need to talk about modulus surfaces. Uh, and this is uh, a three-dimensional extension of what we've been using uh, in two dimensions. Uh, and to warm up, uh, I just want to look at uh, two-dimensional plots of functions where we plot uh, x versus the absolute value of some function of x in a Cartesian plot. So for example, uh, the function 2x is just a line, but absolute value of 2x is a v. Uh, when it hits zero, it bounces back up again. Uh, or 1 over x uh, is a familiar uh, hyperbola, uh, but absolute value of 1 over x uh, is uh, a, uh, a little uh, inverted funnel. Uh, sine x uh, goes up and down. Uh, absolute value of sine x keeps bouncing off the origin. Uh, 1 minus x squared is a parabola, uh, but the absolute value of 1 minus x squared uh, starts to look a bit like Batman. Uh, and as we get to more complicated functions, we get uh, more interesting shapes. So this is uh, a cubic, for example. Uh, and I just bring these up in two dimensions so that the shapes that we see in three dimensions uh, can be, are not quite so jarring and can be interpreted uh, in terms of, uh, of shapes like this. So now what we want to do lo is look at three-dimensional versions of the plots of analytic functions that we've been working with. Uh, and the, those th things are called modular surfaces, which is a plot of uh, x, y, and absolute value uh, of some function, uh, where x and y are points in the, in the Cartesian play that correspond to x plus y, i. And we've been using plots like this uh, to uh, help us identify poles uh, and understand uh, uh, the topography of the, of the poles in complex functions uh, already. For example, here's uh, a plot of 1 plus 4z squared over 1 minus 4z squared, uh, where uh, black uh, corresponds, the, the blacker a point is, the higher the absolute value of the function. And so uh, with a plot like this, we can see at z equals plus a half and minus a half where the denominator uh, vanishes. Uh, as we get closer to those points, the value of absolute value of uh, f of uh, z gets uh, bigger and bigger. Uh, where uh, the <coughs> near 2i, uh, i over 2 and minus i over 2, where the numerator goes to 0, uh, then it gets to be white. Uh, but now, uh, in three dimensions, uh, this plot uh, has a, a much more fascinating shape. Uh, so this is the same plot in, in 3D. Uh, and we'll be looking at properties of uh, plots like this called modulus surface uh, <coughs> to uh, help understand the uh, saddle point method. Uh, so one of the first questions come up is, can we get any shape this way? Uh, and uh, one uh, interesting aspect of, of these kind of plots is that no, actually uh, the shapes that we get are very highly uh, constrained by, uh, by the situation. Uh, in fact, there's only four different types of points uh, on these kinds of surfaces. Uh, there's zeros where uh, the thing actually does get to zero, the absolute value of the function actually gets to zero. Uh, so in, in this case, that's i over 2 minus i over 2. Uh, there's ordinary points, which is uh, pretty much everything else, where uh, these things are, are very smooth. And it's not surprising they're smooth because analytic functions are smooth. They're uh, infinitely differentiable where, where they're defined. And then there's poles, uh, which we've already talked about. Uh, and then there's a fourth type of point called the saddle point, and that's what we're going to focus on uh, in this lecture. Uh, okay, so let's go through these types of points one at a time. Uh, so the first one is uh, zeros. Uh, and uh, we'll first talk about simple zeros. That's where the function is zero uh, and the derivative's uh, not zero. Uh, so this is a, a typical example of uh, a modular plot of a, a function, simple function uh, showing off a zero. So this function is uh, f of z equals 2z. Uh, so in polar coordinates, that's 2 r e to the i theta. Uh, but the modulus is always 2 r. 
uh, so it's, uh, it doesn't depend on theta. So that means if we go out a distance r, then we're going to go up to r. Uh, and then we'll have a circle, so it's a cone. Uh, so it's the same for uh, all theta, and then it comes down to a point uh, right where uh, uh, at zero, zero, where f of z equals zero. Uh, so that's a, a typical zero. Now what's interesting is that uh, all zeros uh, kind of look like this. Uh, they have the same local behavior. Uh, that's because uh, an analytic function, we can expand uh, using Taylor's theorem in terms of its derivatives. Uh, so we can write at any point uh, f of z equals f of z zero plus f prime of z zero uh, times z minus z zero and so forth. Uh, and then if, we, if it's a zero, then the first term uh, is zero and the second one is a constant that's not zero. Uh, and then after that, as we get closer to, uh, as z gets closer to z0, then uh, it behaves uh, just like uh, that constant times z minus z0, just a, a linear function, so just like this. Uh, and uh, it's, it, they all have the same local behavior. Uh, and that, it also doesn't depend uh, on theta. So for example, here's a function that has two zeros, one minus z squared. Uh, so you can see, looking at the profile of it, it looks kind of like our Batman uh, parabola where uh, it bounces off the axis and goes up. But around the zeros, it's little points uh, like this because it has the same local behavior as a simple zero at the two points, uh, plus and minus one. Uh, so uh, that's just uh, doing the math to show the functions that uh, it behaves like locally. Uh, and then, uh, so if we take uh, 1 minus z cubed, then we have three roots, uh, or 1 minus z to the eighth, we have eight roots and so forth. Uh, th these uh, surfaces uh, look uh, quite intricate and complicated, uh, but actually uh, all they are is uh, collections of uh, these points uh, that go down to the zeros. Uh, so uh, now uh, that's a so-called simple zero. Uh, if uh, you have a point where the derivatives are zero for a while and then finally there's a place where some derivative is non-zero, that's called a zero of order p. Uh, so like z cubed has a zero of order three, so the point is uh, uh, curved a little bit more uh, uh, down at those. Uh, at, at those zeros. Um, and so for typical functions, you might have uh, multiple types of zeros. So this is the function z squared plus z cubed. And then you can see the little profile of the cubic function there. Uh, one of the zeros is of order one. Uh, the other one is of order two. So it's fairly easy to understand uh, what zeros are. Those are the points where it touches. Uh, and if it's of order one, it's always going to be a point. Uh, otherwise, it'll have uh, a uh, more rounded uh, contour where it touches. Uh, so that's what zeros are like. Uh, now there's poles. We've already talked about poles. Uh, and pole is a point where the function behaves like a constant over z minus z zero. So uh, as uh, z gets close to z zero, uh, it blows up. Uh, so that's a typical pole, uh, 1 over 1 minus z. Uh, and around the pole 1, again, it's going to be the same for all theta. Uh, so it, it looks like uh, this chimney. Uh, and you, you can, if you cut a cross-section of that, then uh, you get a, a cross-section of uh, what we saw with the hyperbola uh, in 2D uh, absolute value land. Uh, and again, by definition, all poles have the same local behavior. So uh, that's a, a function with three poles, four, uh, and so forth. Uh, this is just one over one minus uh, z cubed, uh, fourth, and so forth. Uh, one minus z to the 25th. Uh, so again, uh, interesting contours uh, tying together uh, poles. Uh, but uh, the, locally, uh, they all uh, behave the same way. And also you can have poles of order p, as we know, uh, where the function uh, grows like a constant over z minus z zero to the p. And those are just chimneys that are uh, uh, tighter and go up faster. Uh, so that's what poles look like uh, in a modulus surface. Uh, so here's just a quick exercise. So what function is this? Uh, so this is a function that's got one zero uh, and one pole. Uh, 
Well, uh, this is uh, a really easy function. It's z over 1 minus z. Uh, so there's a pole at 1 and a 0 at 0. Uh, and then the rest of the surface is just integrating that uh, together. Uh, z over 1 minus z. And think about the 2D analog to that uh, if you want to think about what the cross section is like. Uh, and so we're going to see variations on this kind of surface uh, for all different uh, types of functions. But now uh, th there's the two other types of points. Well, first one is ordinary points. So that's a point where the, the function's not zero and the derivative's not zero. Uh, so neither one of them is zero. And that's just places where uh, the function is smooth. And again, all ordinary points have the same local uh, behavior. Uh, if you uh, look at the expansion uh, as z approaches z0 around, around any point z0, uh, then what's going to dominate is just the constant, the f of z0. Uh, and the rest of the terms will go away uh, as we get closer and closer to z0. It's just an indication that it's smooth. Um, but now we come to saddle points, uh, and that's the, the kind of new idea. And so a saddle point is a point where the function's not zero, but the derivative is zero. Uh, so uh, here's a, a plot of the, f of the function, one over uh, one minus z times two minus z. So it's got poles at, uh, at one and at two. Uh, now sad all saddle points have uh, the same local behavior, just as for uh, poles and zeros. Uh, and again, if we write out the Taylor expansion, now, in this case, uh, the uh, function uh, f of z is non-zero, but the derivative is zero. So what that leaves is a uh, quadratic term, and that's the term uh, that's going to dominate. Uh, so the idea of a saddle point is that uh, it's, there's parabolas, uh, and it does depend on the angle. Uh, so at one angle, there's going to be a downward-pointed parabola, and at another angle, there's going to be perpendicular to that, actually. There's going to be an upward-pointed parabola. And if you take uh, cross-sections all around, uh, it uh, converts from uh, one to the other. But the behavior is always uh, quadratic. It's, it's got a, a parabola, and that's the basic characteristic uh, of saddle points. And that's just like a saddle. That's where the name comes from. You've got a downward parabola uh, and an upward parabola. Uh, and we're going to uh, take advantage of that key characteristic uh, of saddle points to uh, you know, estimate uh, coefficients uh, in generating functions. Uh, so here's a, here's a quick summary. Uh, this is a, a modular surface. Uh, and uh, we talked about the four different types of points. Uh, so there's uh, simple zeros where the function is zero, but the first derivative is not zero. Uh, and this one's got uh, its simple zeros, uh, as indicated. Uh, then there's uh, zeros of order uh, p bigger than 1. We don't have one of those in those. That's where the curve goes down. Uh, then there's the saddle point, where the function is not 0, but the derivative is 0, and it behaves like a quadratic function. Uh, and then there's ordinary points uh, where neither the function or its derivative uh, are zero. Uh, and uh, that's most points uh, in the surface. Uh, and then there's uh, poles uh, where uh, it uh, blows up uh, and is proportional to a constant over z minus z zero. But the key thing to note about this table is, and that's, that's where the function or its derivatives are not defined. Uh, the key thing to note about this table is that that covers all the possibilities. Uh, either they're both zero, or the function is zero, derivative is not, or derivative, uh, the function is not zero and the derivative is, or neither one of them is zero. That's all the possibilities. Those are the four types of points. Um, and indeed, there's a, what's called the maximum, that's an expression of what's called the maximum modulus uh, principle. Uh, and there's all kinds of implications uh, from that. For example, there's no local maxima in a modulus surface. There's nothing that looks like uh, an upside down uh, parabolic mountain. Uh, everything either blows up or it touches down. Uh, and, everything, or, and then there's saddle points which are uh, in between these, uh, but that's the characteristic uh, of these surfaces. So just with uh, that summary, uh, I can just finish by uh, taking a look at, well, first of all, how do you find the saddle points? So here's a simple example, uh, 1 plus z plus z squared plus z cubed. Where are the saddle points in this modulus surface? 
it's easy to know where the zeros are. Uh, that's uh, where the thing equals zero. Where's the saddle point? The definition of where the saddle point is is where the derivative is equal to zero. So derivative of that is 1 plus 2z plus 3z squared. You set that equal to zero and solve it, and you find that the saddle points are at minus 1 third plus or minus i square root of 2 over 3. Uh, kind of uh, uh, minus 1 third in and then a square root of 2 over 3 uh, on either side of the axis. Uh, if you look at a bottom of view of the surface, you turn it upside down, uh, you can see that uh, that's where those points, points are, uh, and that's the downward parabola. Uh, well, in this case, it's the upward parabola upside down uh, and the downward parabola upside down. So uh, the zeros are at minus 1 and plus or minus i, and the saddle points are at minus 1 third plus or minus uh, i squared or 2 over 3. It's easy to find saddle points set the derivative to zero, uh, and the points at which the derivative is equal to zero is where the saddle points are. Uh, so that's one of the um, important things uh, that we're going to need to do uh, in order to uh, analyze uh, generating functions with no singularities. Uh, so just to finish, uh, here's uh, some of the generating functions from analytic combinatorics uh, that we've uh, already looked at. Uh, so this is the type of generating function that we looked at for finding uh, strings with uh, no uh, sequences of k consecutive zeros. Uh, this is four consecutive zeros. Uh, and we were looking at the plots showing us where the poles are. And if you look at the, at the modulus surface, uh, you got the, both the poles uh, and the zeros. Uh, and it's, that's the kind of shape that you get for uh, a function like this. Uh, this is the one for uh, generalized derangements uh, where we had uh, this kind of plot and, uh, and it showed that this lonely pole is the one that's closest to the origin and determining the asymptotic behavior on uh, the modulus surface has uh, uh, a more striking uh, characteristic, even more striking characteristic. Uh, this one is 1 over uh, 2 minus uh, e of z, uh, and that's for uh, generalized surjections. Uh, and that one's got poles uh, kind of next to the imaginary uh, axis. Uh, and uh, again, the surface plot uh, tells us uh, it's the same information, uh, just presented uh, in a different way. Uh, now, all of these have uh, singularities, and we were uh, able to analyze behavior of coefficients uh, because of the singularities. Uh, what we're going to do next is look at the functions that have no singularities and uh, how we're going to uh, estimate coefficients for those functions.